right, so um, my name is Agnes. I'm the hematologist um, from Melbourne Hematology, as well as one of the research fellows from Monash Health. Um, I'll be speaking about direct oral anticoagulants and emergency surgery. So it's only five minutes, so it's an emergency. What do you need to know? And it's an emergency, why call for help? Um, so what do you need to know in a patient who's, um, given that this is a conference for um, hip fractures, the, the basic details about the patient in terms of their age, their weight. Um, if you found out that they're on an anticoagulant, um, we would like, like to know the dose as well as the indication because that would, um, that would um, determine how comfortable we are at the length of, um, of anticoagulation being withheld, um, as well as the last dose. Um, of course, the renal function, because a lot of our anticoagulants these days are dependent on the renal function, as well as the urgency for surgery. Um, so these are all based on the uh, pharmacokinetics of the um, direct oral anticoagulants, such as uh, the Bigotran or Rivroxaban or Apixaban. And you can have a look at the um, IMJ journal if you wanted further um, details. But um, basically, um, kidney and liver um, function is quite important, as well as body weight. Um, so why call for help? Uh, many aspects of care are actually center specific. You can have reagent sensitivity to the levels of direct oral anticoagulants. Uh, different tests may be available depending on where you are practicing. And in the event of major bleeding, then there can be um, var a variation in bl blood product supply actually at the center that you are at, whether or not they have platelets on hand readily or whether or not they need to order it in. And an even antidote availability can differ depending on center and where also where it's stored. Hematologists will be invariably contacted, potentially by laboratory staff, especially in the event of an, a massive transfusion protocol. So it's always good to give us a heads up. We can expedite testing sometimes um, and antidote release at some centers actually require hematology approval, such as idarizumab for the bigger trend, which, because of the cost, um, some centers require this to happen. So the laboratory assays in a patient who's presenting um, that you know that, that you know that they're on an anticoagulant and you know that they um, they fractured their hip and they likely require surgery. Of course, everybody will do a basic coagulation panel, and that will include a prothrombin time, APTT, and sometimes a thrombin clotting time, which will be important for the bigger trend. So on the first column on in the middle, you can see that the bigger trend actually increases APTT um, and increases thrombin time. But the, unfortunately, the thrombin clotting time is very sensitive to even very small amounts of the bigger trend, while rivaroxaban or apixaban um, gives a dose dependent effect on APTT, but it wouldn't be useful in determining the level that's there. Uh, but instead, the PT or INR can be used sometimes for rivaroxaban, depending on the reagent. So again, reinforcing that it's very important to keep your local hematologist in the loop. So um, just recapping there, so the bigger tran, uh, look at the APTT, the thrombin time is very sensitive towards even small amounts, while PT can be useful in rivaroxaban, but not so much in apixaban. So it can qu get quite um, confusing. So that's why we're more than happy to get questions about um, this, especially since it's a time critical scenario. So the specific assays that are available for direct oral anticoagulants include their actual levels, but it can dep and vary depending on where you're practicing. So you can get a dibigotran level from a um, dilute thrombin time, and it, it gives you an actual level, and it's more sensitive than APTT, uh, while the uh, rivaroxan rivaroxaban or apixaban um, have anti-factor 10A levels, but you need to tell the lab exactly what the patient's on so that we can run the right calibrators, so we can have the right curves, so we can actually give you the right level. Um, unfortunately for anti-10A levels, it's not available 24-7 at all centres. So again, uh, in reinforcing the need to have someone local who knows exactly what tests are available at your centre, so then they can recommend. Um, they know they know that they know the tests that are available and their turnaround times, so then they can give you a rough idea as to how long it will be before the result is actually available. Um, and the same limitation goes for dilute thrombin time, actually. Um, so just a quick note about um, viscoelastic coagulation tests, such as TEG or Rotem, because they're, they're gaining popularity. Unfortunately, there's insufficient evidence for assessing the level of direct oral anticoagulants um, at this time. So preoperative testing, um, ideally, this is what we would like. We would like a threshold to tell everybody. So if, it's, if the level is below this threshold, 
then the patient is safe to have surgery. And if it's above this threshold, then we would um, ideally recommend either delaying the surgery or con uh, considering a reversal agent or an agent to flood the hemostatic system. Unfortunately, the evidence for this magic threshold is yet to come, um, but the expert opinion from the International Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis recommend that in patients requiring an urgent intervention associated with high risk of bleeding, such as um, you know, a surgery for a hip fracture, um, then antidote administration should be considered if the drug level concentration exceeds 30 nanograms per mil. Um, but unfortunately, as I've already said, the, the specific levels have varying turnaround times and they might not be available at your center. So then that's why it's always important to call somebody for help and ask whether or not these levels are available and whether or not um, they would come, they would, the result would come back in a timely fashion to actually help you um, guide your decision. So what's the antidote? So for, um, again, this is going through pretty, pretty much the same thing. So if the APTT is prolonged, then we know that there will be some dibigotram on board. Um, so therefore delay, either consider delaying or consider reversal with idiracizumab. Um, whilst for apixaban or rivaroxaban, if the PT is prolonged, then we know that there is some um, actually um, significant levels on board and therefore we would recommend delaying or considering a prohemostatic agent given that there is no reversal agent. Um, but if the prothrombin time is normal, then we, we can't exclude levels that are greater than 30 nanograms per mil. So then therefore we would be recommending awaiting the level if possible, depending on the turnaround times. So the actual reversal agents, um, for the bigger trend, there's idiracizumab, five grams IV. Um, and just to be aware that in some instances, there has been a need for a second dose, mostly at about 12 to 24 hours, if there's recurrence of abnormal coagulation tests and either bleeding or emergency surgery. So um, that's why we recommend, um, it might be institution dependent, but uh, it, it's a good idea to keep an eye on the coagulation tests um, at around these time points, especially in the context of clinical bleeding or um, need for theater again. Um, in rivaroxaban or apixaban, um, there is unfortunately no um, available reversal agent yet. Um, a dexanet is um, a factor 10A decoy, which is FDA approved, but not available in, in Australia yet. Instead, we've been using pro-hemostatic therapies such as um, prothrombin X 50 units per kilogram or indeed um, activated um, factor 7 or um, factor 8 um, bypassing agent. Um, but these would be in, in consultation with your local hematologist. Um, unfortunately, these therapies are based on very limited evidence in, um, for in, in, with in vitro studies animal models and human volunteers. Um, so the um, the use of these um, would have to be on a case-by-case -case basis. And also, um, because it's not a very targeted reversal agent, it also increases the risk of um, going too much the other way and increasing the patient's risk of thrombosis. Um, so that's the end of my talk. <laughs>